Good morning and welcome to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. It is also the fifth Sunday of the month and that means we're doing our unified service. Looking ahead to next Sunday, February 7th, please be reminded that we will have our drive-through communion in the parking lot from 9.45 to 10.30. And also next Sunday, February 7th, we will have our special voters meeting broadcast on Zoom at 12 o'clock noon. You will be receiving an email with a link to that Zoom meeting. All of the other announcements are in our Sunday morning announcements and available on our website and Zion app as well. We're glad that you joined us today as we take this time during the season of Epiphany to say praise the Lord, hallelujah, and to thank God for his many blessings to us. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak responsibly Psalm 111. 
Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. In the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord. Studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work. And his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works. In giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever. To be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Glory, Glory be, be to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we live in the midst of so many dangers, that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 18. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet from me, from among you, from among your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeth on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see his great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up from them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all I command him. And whatever and whoever will not listen to my words, that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. that dwell below the skies let the creator's praise arise alleluia alleluia let the redeemer's name be sung through every land by every tongue alleluia to 
The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This is knowledge is puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence, and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all are all things, and through whom we exist. However, not all possess this knowledge, but some, through former association with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating an idol's, in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged, if his conscience is weak, to eat food offered to idols? And so, by your knowledge, this weak person is destroyed, the brother of whom Christ died. Thus, sinning against your brothers, wounding their conscience when it is weak, you are against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. praise you, God the Father, be all praise eternal Son to thee. Alleluia, alleluia, whom with the Spirit we adore forever and forevermore. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. They went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, and not like the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man in an unclean spirit. As he, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know you, who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsed, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding regions of Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Where could it be? I'm looking all over the place for it again. Ah. Come on, it's got to be around here somewhere. What did Sam do with it? I know he did something with it. Ah. Uh, I don't know. I don't... Ah, ah, I found it. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Got my remote. Very important thing around my house. It controls the TV. It controls the cable. I can get to Netflix. I can get to Prime. I can turn up the volume. I can mute it. I wish it worked on Sam. Okay, all those things. Reminds me of when I was a kid. When I, I think I was the original remote control. I'd sit on the couch next to my dad. He'd smack me upside the head and say, go change the channel. Smack me again and say, go turn it up. Smack me again and get up there to the TV and go click, click, click. You guys remember those TVs. Some of you might have been in original remote controls too. Well, this remote control even lets me be lazy. I can talk to it and it'll do what I want it to do. That's just crazy. I don't even have to push the buttons that are all over it. Well, in today's Bible lesson, in the gospel lesson, we hear a story and we get the information about Jesus teaching. And a man who was possessed by an evil spirit came along. And he said to him, we know who you are. You are the son of God. And Jesus told him to be quiet and to get out of the man. And instantly the demon was quiet. And the man shook and the spirit left him. And those that were there said, what is this? This man teaches with authority, a new authority. Even the demons listen to him. Well, that's the way it is. God is in control. Jesus is in control all the time. Not like this, but he's in control with our, the world around us, our lives. Even the craziness with the pandemic, the shelter in place, and all the different events that have been going on around us in the world, we need to remember that Jesus is the one that's in control. Jesus is the one who's there for us, to guide us, to lead us, to direct us. And whatever he says, we listen to, we do, and we need to follow. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus as that example for us. We thank you that he came and he's died on the cross for us to forgive us. Help us to pay attention and to listen, to do what he says, and to realize that you are in control at all times. In your name we pray, amen. Well, now I can turn on the TV and see what's on this afternoon. Dearly loved and precious children of God, 
brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So for the last few weeks, we've been talking about vision, specifically God's vision for us and for Zion. In fact, we have dedicated this year to be the year of vision at Zion Lutheran. Last Sunday, we talked about God's vision for discipleship. As the year progresses, we'll be talking about and looking a lot more at what the Bible says about God's vision for our mission. And particularly in this unusual year, how God might be opening new doors and giving us new opportunities to use the gifts he has given to us to be bringing his precious word of life in Christ and his precious sacraments to the world in need around us. May God bless our hearts and our eyes and our minds to see his vision for our work in his name. Today, though, we're going to take a little break from that. Once in a while, we need to pause from the heavy lifting of God's kingdom principles and refresh ourselves. It's not a break from God's word by any means, but it is an opportunity to pause and to do a little hop, skip, and a jump in God's promises in order to recharge our spiritual batteries for the vision work ahead of us this year. With that in mind, we're going to take a closer look at our psalm appointed for today, Psalm 111. Psalm 111 begins with praise, the very first word of the psalm. In the original is the Hebrew word hallelujah, which translated literally into English is, praise the Lord. The psalmist begins with a call to praise the Lord for who he is and for all that he has done for us. Then the psalmist continued, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright, in the congregation, Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Is a call to us today as well. To praise God for who he is and for all he has done for us. To give thanks to him in the assembly of the congregation with our hearts united in praise of our gracious and giving God. In particular, we're going to look at three of the reasons the psalmist gives us to praise God today. And then we're going to look at precisely what that means in specific and particular ways in our lives of faith today. The first reason to say, Praise the Lord, hallelujah, is because, as the psalmist declares, the Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. The Lord knows our needs and provides for them. Let me say that again. The Lord knows your needs. He sees your struggles. He feels your pain. He knows all your needs of body and soul. Even if you think that no one else understands and no one else knows what you're going through, the Lord understands. And the Lord knows what you're going through 
and what you need. And the Lord is gracious and merciful, the psalmist reminds us. And in his loving care, he will provide for all of our needs of body and soul. For which we say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The second reason to say that, praise the Lord. Hallelujah is because, as the psalmist declares, he sent redemption to his people. The Lord is merciful and forgiving. He does not remember our sins forever, but he has forgiven them for the sake of Jesus, who died as the payment for all of our sins and who rose again for our justification. By his grace, in his mercy, God has come to rescue us. And he redeems us through the death and resurrection of Christ. And he daily renews and restores us to a right relationship with himself. By his grace, through his call, in faith in Jesus Christ. The third reason to say praise the Lord, hallelujah, is, as the psalmist declares, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This kind of fear is not so much about being afraid of God, although there is every reason to fear him, but rather to believe in him with confident and trusting faith to trust that he is gracious and merciful as he has declared himself to be and revealed himself to be, to come to God in trusting faith, to come to him in hopeful faith, to come to him expecting him to keep his promises as he always does, and to believe that he will always be there for us and with us and helping us through every trial and need of this earthly life. That fear of the Lord, that confidence in God's word, that trust in his promises, is the beginning of a life of wisdom and peace and joy in the Lord. Now let me offer you three very practical ways to say praise the Lord and to live a hallelujah life. First, let us be grateful. Recognize how merciful God is toward you and how much he does provide for you. Let us work on turning our grumbling into gratitude. And then we will never lack the joy of the blessings God provides. Remember how he has provided for you in the past. All of the challenges and difficulties and struggles he has brought you through and brought you to another day of his grace. This day as well, and whatever it holds, and tomorrow and whatever the future may hold, is filled with the presence, the care, and the provision of our God. Let us be grateful and give thanks to the Lord for his daily and constant provision for all our needs of body and soul. Secondly, share your blessings. As God has so graciously forgiven you of your sins, so be ready, eager, and willing to forgive others who have sinned against you. As God has poured good measure into your lap, so share the blessings you have received with those around you who are in need. As God has provided for you, 
See around you the opportunities to share those blessings and provide for others in need around you. And thirdly, pray for and seek to live a life of strong faith in God. Don't be afraid of God, for his wrath has been removed and placed upon Christ instead of us. And in Christ, he looks at us with love and mercy. Have confidence in him. The Lord is our refuge an ever-present help in time of need, a tower of strength, our rock and our redeemer. Let us live trusting confidently in his promises, believing that he is with us and for us, trusting him to carry us through every time of challenge, every need, and every day and step of this earthly life. Be grateful. Share the blessings God has given to you. Live with bold and confident faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus 
and for all people according to their needs. O Holy Trinity, you are God of gods and Lord of lords. There is no God but you alone. From you and through your Son, Jesus Christ, are all things. Reveal the saving knowledge of your truth to us and to all the world, that loving you above all, together we may be united in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You alone are God, whose voice was heard at Sinai, and whose authority was manifest in Christ, the prophet greater than Moses. Send faithful workers into your harvest, who will listen diligently to your word, and will speak it faithfully in your name. Preserve us from those who would lead us away from your truth, and give us ears to hear gladly the saving words of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, guard our hearts and build them up in love. Support us in our lives of faith. Strengthen those whose faith is weak and make us bold to live out our faith in word and in action. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, give health and wisdom to our president, vice president, and governor, our legislators and judges, and all who serve for our governance and protection. Guide them and help them to serve in high purpose, wisdom in counsel, and unwavering in duty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son cast out unclean spirits and taught with authority. He is the great physician of body and soul. Have mercy on those who are sick, distressed, in danger, or facing any need. We especially pray for those who are recovering from COVID, including Eleanor Tyson, and also the mother, sister, and brother-in-law of Sharon Murphy, namely Pat, Susan, and Jim. And we pray for Barb Van Fossen, who is recovering from successful bladder surgery, and for Merritt Bartlett, Evelyn Ekstrand, Glenn Pominek, and Tom Poole, who are also recovering. Bless them all with patience, strength, and full healing according to your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.